there are several different types of chemicals that could be deliberately released to cause harm and disease among populations. Some of these chemicals are in the form of gas, some of them are liquids, some of them are even solids, and that will depend on the way in which they're dispersed. What we tend to see is different classes of chemicals that act against the human body in different ways. Some chemicals will impact our respiratory tract and will cause irritation to the respiratory tract. So these are things like chlorine or several household chemicals or toxic industrial chemicals that may be widely available. Other chemicals such as blister agents primarily target the skin and also the respiratory tract and cause blistering to the skin and these may be seen in delayed uh, signs and symptoms that may take up to 24 hours to appear. Other chemical classes include the nerve agents and the nerve agents primarily attack our central nervous system and that has an impact on our ability to breathe, on our muscular functioning, and that is really in the nerve agents where you see um, the highest cases of deaths among the populations that are exposed. Other chemicals tend to have much lower um, case fatality rates in exposed populations. And the most important thing is for people who are exposed to these toxic chemicals to be able to be removed from the toxic uh, contamination decontaminated and then treated through um, professional medical care. Depending on the type of chemical that's used, on whether it's known as a persistent chemical, which is a type of chemical that um, hangs around, is oily in, in, uh, in its physical characteristics, we can expect to see what we call secondary contamination. And that can include contamination of healthcare workers if they're not properly protected. And this is why it's so important that, depending on the class of chemical that's used, that healthcare workers and first responders are adequately protected with the right level of protective equipment to enable them to get into areas that are potentially contaminated or treat cases that are potentially contaminated whilst protecting their own lives. The most chemicals um, and highly toxic chemicals um, cause harm to people but do not have any specific treatment. So that means that the general treatment is that people are removed from the contaminated areas, they're decontaminated, and then the medical treatment is generally supportive care. There are some chemicals such as nerve agents that do have specific antidotes that can be used under strict medical supervision, of course. There are a number of classes of chemicals that are known to have long-term effects in populations. For instance, some of the blister agents we know to have long respiratory tract uh, consequences on people that are exposed and also can lead to cancers and other health effects. But what we tend to know about nerve agents and some of the other classes of chemicals is quite limited, partly because the chemicals have been quite rarely used on human populations. WHO has a leading role in providing guidance on the public health aspects of chemical exposures, including the use of chemicals against, deliberately against populations. That involves providing guidance on how to decontaminate patients that have been exposed to chemicals, how to provide clinical care, how to provide risk communication messages to the public, and also how to protect our own staff and the, and the protection of staff, other staff working in areas that are potentially contaminated. The type of support that we provide can include training medical workers, first responders, it can be about distributing medicines and antidotes to hospitals and pre-positioning protective equipment at the right places. And it will also involve risk communication activities to populations in potentially affected areas. WHO has no formal role in investigating who conducted certain events and who is held responsible. That is for the responsibility of other uh, organizations such as the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons or the UN Secretary General. The use of chemicals to inflict harm or death on human populations is illegal under international law. Um, that's overseen by the Chemical Weapons Convention that was brought into force in 1997. This includes a complete prohibition on the development, the stockpiling, the use and the transfer of weapons, of chemical weapons, from one place to another. 
and this uh, international norm has generally been respected, although we have seen in the past few years that chemicals have been used on the battlefield once again.